Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions, or sometimes I will do a pre recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also, of course, the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course, you just watching this video is already much appreciated, but if you wish to support the channel further, you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks, and of course, joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. If you're curious to see what my prep journey is like to the stage at the time of filming this, I'm actually six weeks out. Kind of scary, kind of exciting. Then be sure to check it out. I upload a couple of vlogs a week. Uh, if you're interested in one-to-one coaching, then email me. I've opened up some availability, but now the Phoenix Rising has finished. Um, a lot of it is probably more appropriate for early risers in the US or for people that are in Europe. Because it's a bit earlier in the day. Um, besides that, that's it really. <laughs> um, today we're going to look at some glitters and lasers. She apparently has had her, her fitness secret. Because, you know, we take fitness advice from a super morbidly obese woman that has been on the weight loss journey but only gained weight and hasn't shown any other types of progress. Um, so, yes, that, let, let's, let's look at that. Let's look at her fitness tips or her fitness secrets. And go from there, really. Oh, my word. I don't know I'm on a health journey. Um, duh. <laughs> if you've missed it on my channel, I don't know how. And one of the... Is this... So, y'all know I'm on a health journey. Um, duh. Is she actually being serious? This is how she starts a video. I've been on a health journey. She's done nothing to lose weight. The one thing she needs to do to make sure she is healthy is to lose weight. And she just gets bigger and bigger or stays about the same size. This woman is literally enormous. I th I, she has to be over 500 pounds. She's maybe close to 600 pounds. This woman, it, like... If you've missed it on my channel, I don't know how. And one of the things that's been really important about, you know, this phase of my health journey is rebuilding my strength, my endurance, and my more. Just look how, look how big she is. I get the knees. She, it, I, I don't even know if she should be doing any of this. If I think if you're this big, you should be working with a trainer in a minute, at least in person. Um, and you should just keep to like doing water aerobics and maybe some walking because I can't like any slight fuck up that she does. If she injures herself, she is like for real bed bound mobility. And I knew taking this challenge on that I couldn't really do it alone. In fact, everybody around me who's been supporting me in the other parts of my health journey were like, you can't do this alone. I needed a trainer, but I had had a terrible experience with the trainer. My, my dogs are desperate to go out, but it's like quarter past five, so it's too early for them to go for walks. Don't look at me like that. Gosh, look at, look at that judging face. Excuse me. No, it's not time. You can put your wiggle tail down, but it's not happening. Uh, and then the other one is just over there with the big ears. Yes, big ears, I'm talking about you. Little fannies. <laughs> but we're gonna go soon. I need to take him to the park so they can run because they were hyper as well yesterday. In the past, where he basically told me that I was lazy because I couldn't adjust my schedule to fit the like very unlike awkward times he had available, and therefore I was going to be a failure. And it made me. I don't think he said she was lazy because she couldn't fit the times. Like to not be able to make somebody's schedule doesn't make you lazy what makes you lazy is not doing the workouts or not doing them properly or not adhering to them but to say that somebody's lazy that they couldn't make it i don't believe that that's what happened i think he probably said like i don't want to work with you because you're lazy um and maybe there was also some conflict with time schedules 
but I don't think he said to her that she was like, sorry, I've got like a tiny little cat hair on my face and it's like bothering me. So this is why I'm like touching my face weird, but I've also got makeup on, so I don't want to ruin it. I feel like crap. So I was not looking for that experience again, to be really honest, and I was a little shy about it. Well, then I heard about Copilot and I was like, okay, this might work for me. It's a combination. So I've seen a few people do this Copilot stuff now, and I'm guessing it's a new beach body. It's a new, some sort of app that's being pushed, a new better bodies, better bodies, better bodies, just really good clothing, by the way. Discount code in the uh, description. I'm an um, ambassador. I'm not affiliated. I don't get any discounts. I'm just somebody that wears, in fact, this is better bodies. Um, I'm a huge fan of all of their clothes. So, but this is, uh, I meant to say better health, basically, but no, better bodies and gasp. But don't use my discount code, to be honest. It's only 10% off, 10 or 15. Wait until they have a sale, and they have sales all the time. 50% off, 70% off. Just wait until they have sales, that's what I do. ...of technology plus human connection to help you build better fitness habits. So what it is, is you go on their website and you kind of just fill out an initial survey. And you're like, this is what I wanna do, this is what's important to me, this is how I feel about certain things. Then you get a selection of trainers you can pick from, and then you find your selected trainer and you start working with them. So my trainer's name is Olivia, and this is a little bit of our onboarding call. Outside of that, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, what do you like to do for fun? Any fun, cool hobbies? Yes, so I am actually a pretty active individual, so I like going on... Can you imagine saying that with a straight face being like 600 pounds? Like, I'm an active individual. Are you really? How active can you be when you're that size? You like to pretend that you're active. Yeah, sure, I agree with that. But you're not really an active individual. Walks with my dog. That's something I do a lot. Yeah, clearly not. I didn't even know she had a dog. I've never heard her mention her dog. I don't watch her that often, but I've never heard her mention a dog. Will you stop with the dramatic yawning, please? Excuse me, excuse. <laughs> Here she comes. Well, what is it, girls? What what is it with you two today? You've been like this all morning. Why are you both being hyper for? And the cat's just like they're playing with the tail. Oh, you can't see. She does it all the time. Anyway. Yeah, I didn't know that she had a dog, and she clearly doesn't walk. I just don't believe she walks a dog a lot. I want to see pedometer stats. Just like April, I want to see stats, oh, or it didn't happen. Um, and we go to the park a lot. <laughs> basically my life revolves around my dog. So you're completely guided through the whole workout from start to finish. You're gonna hear my voice tell you what exercise you're doing, how many reps you're doing, if it's weighted, if it's time, if we're modifying. So say we're in a hotel for the week and we're, we wanna do. Mm -hmm. This is kind of cool though, to have like a virtual, so it's like a virtual PT, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of a cool service. And, and could be potentially very beneficial, I'm not going to lie. Um, still, it's sometimes better to have things like that in person. Uh, you would have to, uh, in my opinion, it's probably better to work with, well, you could probably adjust a lot of it. The thing is, if, that, if, they, <coughs> if they don't have equipment, how can they potentially replicate an exercise to show how to do it? Because you can give coaching cues verbally, but it's not quite the same as sometimes demonstrating it. Because... It's quite often when I train with somebody, which is not very often, but I, I train with Lucy sometimes. Um, and there's little things that I'll, where I will do certain exercises and just placing the, like, for example, if I do like a hyperextension, which is like for the glutes. Now, for often, I find for me to actually feel it in my glutes, I, I do have to round my upper back a bit more. But also what I do is instead of having my feet flat in the machine, I have to like balance it on the outside and like kind of like squeeze my glutes in, but I have to demonstrate it so that you can see what I mean and um, to get like a particular muscle group. So uh, it's, it's a good service. I like the idea of it that you can have a personal trainer there that is virtually with you to watch you do your exercises, but I think coaching cues can only go so far. But it's better than nothing, but I think there would be an element of uh, on this, the person that's taking this service they need to have an element of knowledge about exercises to some degree 
Um, incline push-ups, we don't have a bench. We can do them from the wall. So I'll always give you the, that feedback on how to modify anything. She is lovely. I'm obsessed with her. And what I'm also obsessed with is through this process, is that they're very mindful of people having different goals and different past experiences with fitness. So this is a body neutral experience. This is not like, we'll get you thin fast. That is not. Well, any, any coach that promises to get you thin fast is not a good coach in my opinion. Like that's not, that shouldn't be the goal anyway. Um, this is why sometimes I, I do, when I coach clients, sometimes people get a bit, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They, sorry, like guys, prep is prepping and like words are starting to get real fucking hard for me. Like no joke, I can notice the cognitive decline. It's, it's starting to happen. I've only got six more weeks to go. But besides that point, sometimes people get um, discouraged because they feel like they need to lose a lot more weight faster. The thing is, is that like I can put anybody on a very harsh deficit. First of all, you can't, you, exercise is not going to make you skinny the kitchen is going to make you skinny what you stick in your mouth is going to make you skinny if that's the goal but to lose body fat is done in the kitchen exercise helps with building muscle recomping the body and shaping the body in a way that you like to look obviously it will create some deficit through it like through energy output but realistically body fat is lost through through what you put in your mouth um but the thing is it's, it's very easy to get people to lose weight you just put them on a really harsh deficit but that should not be the goal. The goal should always be, in my, the way that I coach, is that I aim for as much food as possible and as little de deficit as possible. For, for me, the goal is always that people are um, eat as much as possible with a small enough deficit where there is some fat loss, but also some recomping is, op is still possible because the food is high enough, but also that the strength is there, that people enjoy training, that they can be functional in life. Because at the end of the day, if you're not a bodybuilder, there's no need to push yourself to such an extreme. It's more about finding that balance where you're losing body fat, but you're strong and you're doing training and you're recomping. And some people, they don't lose a lot of weight, but you see the side by sides and there's big differences. What this is, this is, we'll help you build consistent habits so you have a more fulfilling life, which is my whole shtick. Can we talk about like literally exactly what I was looking for? Once I like had my first onboarding call with Olivia, I told her I wanted to work out three to four times a week and she literally kind of assessed where I was at through our conversation and gave me three workouts to try. And when I did the first workout, everything was super hard. It was so hard. There was an abs. I just cannot get over how uncomfortable her body looks. It's, it, it's, it's almost remarkable to me that in a way that she is as mobile as what she is, to be honest, but it just must be, she must be in so much pain. Like you can tell that she's always, whenever she's standing, she's always holding on to something, but she must be in so much pain. <sighs> just being so big. I cannot believe that she is. And she, maybe she doesn't even know that she is, but my word, I just like, it, it hurts for me to look at her. Like I, I, I feel sorry for her. I, I do. I feel sorry for her, but I don't at the same time because like she's an adult and she's responsible for her own health. But at the same time, it's like, man, it must be so hard to when well, you get to that stage to try and fix it. Section where I was doing dead bugs, which is where you do like this, the arms and separate. Oh, mother of per Is she doing this in the middle of a hotel lobby? Where the fuck is she doing this? Is this, this in her house? Oh, mother of pearl, did I really separate? Is this in a hotel or in her house? Oh, it's in a gym? My guess is, is that this is a hotel gym and my guess is that there's no people around. How awkward would you feel just laying down in the middle of like a hallway doing some dead bugs for your video? Like, I, I'm a vlogger too, but I just don't do some shit for my vlog, man. Maybe this is why like I'm not like the, the best vlogger there is because I just refuse to do some things like in public because it's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, mother of pearl, did I realize how weak I was. And I remember sitting in that first workout being like, John is filming this and I am super embarrassed because in some shots I looked like, mm, and in some shots I was, you know, struggling to breathe. And well, of course you're going to struggle to breathe. You're like, what, five, six hundred pounds. Everything you're going to do is going to be struggle.
And like, wow, I just realized how far I was from my goals. Like literally so far from my goals. My goals were like, is she like, it, does she have like a reverse body dysmorphia? A bit like Anne Boleyn Reed or, or like April Lauren. Does she think she is more of a fitness queen than what she really is? Do they? Do you think that some people just have to tell themselves this to stay in a delusion because they cannot accept the reality of how dire their situation is? It must be, right? It's like, I know some people that are prepping for a show and then when you see them, they're like, yeah, 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 I'm like so close to the show and I'm ready and I'm shredded and I'm like... No, you're not. Whereas like, I don't know, like maybe... I'm, I'm one of those people that is like ultra realistic about everything, like almost to a point where I'm kind of negative. Um, but I think it's maybe because it's better to just assume the worst and then like, at least you won't be disappointed, right? Like I know this is like a really negative mindset to have, but like I look at myself and I know that I'm getting lean and I'm leaner now than I was last year at six weeks out, which is great. But at the same time, like I also know that six weeks is a long time still. It's a short time. It's a long time. I still have a ways to go. So like, I just, I just find it fascinating when pe when she's like, oh, I'm so surprised about how un unfit I am. It's like, dude, look at yourself. Like, how can you be fit when you're this size? Like it's, it's physiologically, it's impossible. Like, but like biomechanically, it's impossible. Your body, the mass that it has, it's physically impossible for you to be a certain level of fitness because everything's under pressure. Your joints, your organs, your cardiovascular system, everything is under pressure. Like it's, I find it really, like it's, I find that that's why I kind of like these reactions because the, the mindset is just fascinating to me. Like I just don't get it, truly. Very far away. But I also realized that I wasn't alone and this was just the first workout of the rest of my life, right? Like these changes I've been making in my life are not about a period of time, right? This is not about, you know, working out for six months. It's about working out for the rest of my life. How do I find a balance? How do I find comfort? And, and really, Copilot has offered me that. And I'll talk about why it's offered me that. I talked about how I'd had a bad experience with my trainer, right? I have a weird schedule, right? My schedule is busy, it is not predictable, it is inconsistent, um, and I can't guarantee that every Monday at 2 p.m. I can train. I, I just don't think a lot of trainers expect that though, unless you do like in-person PTing, but then obviously if you're an in-person PT, then you know, the PT has other clients as well. They can't just wait around and expect and train you when it suits you. Like they have to plan in. Like it's the same with me. It's like I, I plan in my check-ins. If somebody misses their check-in, like sometimes I have time, but if, if I don't have time afterwards, it's like, yeah, sorry, we're going to have to do it over text or we have to re try and rearrange it because I schedule in my day. If people, if you're an in-person personal trainer, you schedule in your clients. So I don't under, like, like, obviously, yeah, I understand where she's coming from, that maybe she can't commit to like Monday every day, Monday every week at 2 p.m. But at the same time, she can't expect that trainer to just hang around and be ready for her when it suits her when she has time. Because they have other clients and other time slots because time is money, right, at the end of the day. I wish I could. I wish my life was that simple. Heck, I would love a little less chaos. But that's just not how my life is. So with Copilot, I choose when I work out. And I can also choose where I work out. So sometimes I am literally in a hotel room and that is all I have. What's really cool about this is Olivia can adjust all of my training to fit wherever I am. She also gives- I mean, that is, that is pretty cool though, to be fair. But I think this, <sighs> For somebody like me, obviously this is not designed for people like me. This is designed for people that are beginners. I understand that. But for anybody that has some level of experience, there's only so much you can do with a bodyweight workout. You can get a decent-ish bodyweight workout in, but the reality is like, there's only so much you can do. So, but it is, I have to admit, for somebody that is new to a fitness journey, um, that is a beginner, if you are traveling a lot, if they are adjusting your workouts like that, 
and they can do it on short notice, that is a pretty good service, to be honest me personally back up training options so like if I have a last minute trip pop up like I had a last minute trip pop up just like two weeks ago for Houston and I had to do my workout in a hotel room she had for me a workout routine that worked for a hotel room saved in my extra workouts so that even if I had a last minute trip or had something unexpected happen and I had no equipment that I would be able to keep my consistency and that for me has been like the biggest change in all of this is that now I'm finding a way that I can work out wherever I am. And what the fuck is this woman doing all of these random exercises? In work out wherever. I like, would you not be so embarrassed? Like laying there. I would literally, I could not do this. I could not lay there in a freaking pool doing exercises like that. I'm sorry. Even like if I do things like posing in the gym and stuff like that, which always like I have to practice. I usually do it in a corner. I usually kind of am quick about it. If I film in the gym, if you ever watch any of my B-roll footage of me in the gym, I always try and film in a way that there's no other people around or try and minimize it. If it's busy, I don't even film. I could not imagine laying there in the middle of a fucking pool like this. Now granted, there's not many people around and maybe it's early in the morning, but still. I am she has no and pain. I have a teammate who's helping me figure out that process of working out wherever I am at whatever time it is another really good example of this is I knew I was going to Puerto Rico and I did not want to stop working out I wanted to make sure that that even if it was like the worst workouts I'd ever done in my life, I wanted to make sure that I stopped and tried to do a workout. But that meant, again, odd times, odd equipment. I actually had her come up with routines for me to do on the beach because I thought, well, if I'm at a beach shooting in a swimsuit, I can take 30 to 40 minutes and stop, do a workout and push in. Or if I'm really sore, I can do this workout in the water, which will help my joints. So we worked together to come up with a plan that worked for that travel experience so that I would know that no matter what happened, I would be prepared to keep. I mean, it is. Sorry, Daisy just had to come. Did you need some attention? Did you need some attention, huh? I, I do like the idea of this app. I'm not going to lie. I think it's very clever. I think it's nice. You get to talk to somebody. I think it's great that they're adjusting workouts. Um, yeah, it's like it's, it's a very good idea the consistency of this adventure and I think that is like for me what this is all about right we are bombarded as plus-size women and men and and they's with imagery and and marketing that tells us that the reason we work out is to shrink ourselves or the reasons that we move are to become some perpetual person that is worth more and better than we are right now is this is this true i don't necessarily agree with that i think isn't working out just to make yourself physically and mentally stronger and healthier isn't that why people work out i don't think people work out to get skinny like maybe you start off like that but i can assure you most people when they start working out they want to get stronger like when you get addicted to the gym you get addicted to physically getting stronger like, yeah, it's like weight loss is part of it, especially when you're her size, you should aim to lose some body fat. Like, what's wrong with that? But in general, I think the goal of working out is not to get skinny, it's to get stronger. And this is the first fitness experience that I've personally had where that was not in the narrative at all. We never talked about my weight or my size. We did talk about my mobility. Now, one of my big goals when coming in here, and I do not like the word transformation because I am still the same person, just a slightly different packaging as my body does change a little bit, but I love the word journey because it has been a journey because I would not- Yeah, a journey, a, a regression journey, it's like not an improvement journey, is it? If I hadn't done all the steps along the way to get me here, and that's really what fitness is. It's taking one step forward every day and eventually this outfit is horrendous i can't imagine even anybody of in any shape of any shape of any body type looking good in this it just <laughs> in my opinion it's it's not very beautiful <laughs> looking back and seeing you're a mile down the road and i feel like right now i'm a mile down the road and i can look back at when i started this experience versus
See, this is really nice. I like this outfit a lot. I think this, this is very fun. But that other thing... When I... Where I am now and go, wow, things have changed a little bit. Candidly, I'm incredibly more flexible now than I... But, I mean, like, it's good to be flexible, especially as you get older. Um, but is flexibility as important as losing weight and getting to a healthier BMI? So you don't have all of these health problems? I don't know. I'd rather be less flexible. I'd, let me just put, I'd rather not be able to touch my toes and have, like, a functional body in terms of everything internally and not be diseased and having to take medic medications than be able to touch my body or do a split. That, that's just me. I'd rather have a longer life than be able to, be, yeah, be flexible. I was at the beginning of this journey, and I think that is the thing that I am seeing the most. My mobility is inherently different. Yeah, and what difference And it's make? not... Like, and what difference does that make, though? Like, seriously. Like, what difference does... Like, it's good... To, don't get me wrong. Flexibility, it is important to stay flexible. Especially as you get older, you, like, do your stretches and stuff like that. But you, being flexible is not... It's... It, it, on the weight loss journey, it's literally not like it. It's not important. It doesn't matter on the weight loss journey or or on the health journey, as she stated in the beginning. Flexibility and health don't necessarily. I mean, yes, as you get older, it's very important to stay mobile and flexible and all of that. Don't get me wrong, but in terms of like what's more important, what fat loss is not flexibility. I like. A little bit. It's a lot. And I'm not a big fan of side-by-sides because I don't want to say like, this one's better because it's smaller or this one's bigger. It's, don't look at my size, guys. So Literally look at the mobility of my leg. Here you can see I can barely get the leg up. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm breathing heavy. And now look at this clip that we took today. Look at the flexibility. Look at the height on the leg. Look at how comfortable... <laughs> She still looks like she's struggling just as much, just a little bit less. And at ease I am doing the exercise. And the, the, the sad thing is, it's like she feels like she's really made progress there. The sad thing with this is, is that she's showing this clip here of her like raising her legs right. And how comfortable. Now look at this clip that we took today. Look, she's saying like, she's saying like, look how comfortable I look. Look it's... at the flexibility. Look at the height. She's still struggling to do so, like the, the most straightforward exercise and look i get i get that her size stuff like that is difficult her legs weigh a fucking ton they're massive her legs weigh a ton so i'm sure that doing that is difficult but she's making it sound like oh my god look how look how i'm progressing how how easy it is for me this sh the, the point is this shouldn't even be hard the point is is that if you're a healthy weight and if you're a normal able-bodied person this shouldn't even be hard most people should be able to stand there on one leg and just move their leg around it really should not be a struggle at all. And she's like, oh my God, look, and, like, and I get it. It's great that she's improving, but I feel like the way she's talking is like, this should, it shouldn't even be hard. And I don't think she realizes that. It's like, this is the most straightforward of exercises. Reinforces the fact that I had no clue what I was doing in the gym previously, because I never got that progress when I was just dinking around with stuff down there on my own. And I think that was my favorite um, pastime before. After I had that bad experience with a trainer, I would like go down there and be like, I can work out myself. And I would do like stuff and I would think I was doing something, but it was never consistent enough or in, in a pattern enough that I actually ever built my core strength. And the, the move that made me realize that my body was fundamentally more prepared to handle the challenges that I wanna face was when I was doing this stupid bridge move. And yes, it is very sexual and I do not care. When I lift the pelvis up, I am- <laughs> She's so big that when she does a bridge, her ass doesn't even leave the, like she doesn't actually leave the floor. That's sad, isn't it? I've never been able to do that well. I have never been able to do it with such ease. And then, and with the opening of the legs too, like it's just, I know it's, it's not the, it's, it's, it's fitness guys, just see this. Don't tell me she has a German Shepherd dog. I see a picture of a German Shepherd. Is that the dog she has? There's no way that dog is getting the exercise that it needs. German Shepherds are, and like Malinois and stuff, they need so much exercise. Like I've got a little, I've got a little baby Malinois over there. 
She's not really. I think there is some. I think there's definitely some shepherd in them though. I don't know what they are. They're little mix. They're little street doggies, ain't ya? You little. What do you call them? You little mutts. Yes, you're a little mutt doggy. Yes, you're a little mutt doggy. <laughs> <laughs> They're the most dramatic yawners. Are you a dramatic yawner? Are you a dramatic yawner? <laughs> Point is, somebody her size should not have a dog like a Malinois or a German Shepherd because they need a lot of exercise and there's no fucking way she's giving him, giving that dog the exercise that it needs. Fitness, but I've never been able to do that easily. And when I was doing that, I was like, this isn't hard anymore. This is easy. Like I can just, I can just do this now. And it was such an amazing feeling. I mean, even just doing like a bridge from the floor, like it shouldn't be hard. You should be able to just do that. Is that just me? Like, I'm not saying doing it with weight. I'm not saying doing weight at anything, but just doing a bodyweight bridge. Like mo that if you're struggling doing that because you lack that much strength in your body or you're just so obese that is so heavy that's so, that's concerning to have to just be able to do something i haven't been able to do before and it's not something monumental it's not something crazy but it's something right and i think that's what i like about copilot the most is i am seeing my progress and what's also super cool is it's all kind of t attached to my Apple Watch. You guys know that I am very addicted to this thing. <laughs> it's my little child. And they can track your like range of motion and stuff. So while you're working out, if you like aren't doing the full range of motion, your watch will be like, hey, go a little higher, go a little lower, a little faster, a little slower. It like yells at you. So you still get that like <laughs> in-person feeling. But we're never going to see any statistics though on how much she's working out, how many steps she's doing, all of that. We won't see that. It's just another gimmick to show like, oh my god, I'm so committed to my journey. You don't need to have a fitness watch to tell you that you're being a fit person. Trust me. It's crazy, man. Technology is so cool. But for me, it's generally changed my life in helping me make fitness a realistic thing that I can be accountable for and do consistently. I can't guarantee anything, but let me tell you what happened for me. I've worked out for 16 workouts with Copilot and I'm gonna continue for many, many more. Um, and this is what's changed for me. I'm happier, I'm more flexible, my endurance has improved, and- And she's still not lost any fucking weight. And my body is more toned. Did she, is she saying that with a straight face? I don't know if I've lost weight per se because I don't really focus on that. She's joking, right? Her body is more toned. Where, Anna? You've lost no body fat. Will you stop it now, please, Rosie? It's enough. She's literally lost no body fat. It's, it's, it's like nothing has changed at all. But I notice my body is different. And it is a direct... Well, as, as long as you tell yourself that, then that's, that's all right, isn't it? As long as you see the difference. The rest of the world doesn't see it, but as long as you see it, that's all that matters. Reflection of consistency. Not a miracle cure, not a magical solution, but being consistent. And for me, that's what Copilot has offered me. So if you want to check out Copilot, and again, I highly recommend you do. It's been absolutely incredible and frankly, life-changing for me, you can click the link down in my bio and get 14 days free with your own- This has been a one giant ad. Miss and health expert coach. So with that, guys, I just wanted to tell you this story because I'm, I'm really proud of myself. I'm really proud of myself of where I've been and, and where I've come from and, and no, where I am you? now. Because I know that this is like, this is one step, right? I've got so much further to go and I am, for the first time in a long time, seeing real progress and progress that I'm enjoying along the way. And I think that's important too. It's fun. Stop it. Working out with Copilot is fun. Yeah, so and if it's not, tell your trainer and they'll make it more fun. All right, so I'm gonna go because my dog is, why are you being so no, Rosie, why are you being so noisy? Such a noisy girl for it. You're being so naughty. Why are you being so naughty for? Hey, 
Why are you being a naughty girl for? Why are you being such a naughty girl for when mummy is working? Huh? 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 Do we need to go to the park so you can run? Do we need to go to the park so you guys can run? Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Do you need to go for a little peepee? Do you need to go for little peepees? Yeah. Okay, we'll go for peepee. -pee. Right. As you can tell, my dogs are incredibly eager to go out. So I'm going to take them for their morning walk. Uh, we'll be back with fit and tone. I'm sure this co-pilot thing is going to get uh, Amber. Anna's super fit and toned, like more fit and toned than she is already. Uh, I do like the idea of it. This co-pilot thing, it does sound good. However, um, obviously this is a giant ad. But the concept of it, I like. I do like the concept of it. But uh, all the experiences that Anna have, it's all great that you feel more flexible. Well, what is that doing for your health? Not an awful lot. Anyway, I'm going to go, guys. So, insert A. Um, a dog in a park emoji. Comment, like, subscribe, dislike the video. If you disliked it, let me know down below why. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.